Welcome to 3D Politics Live. Once again on Monday, I'm Tom, your incredibly pertinent host. And I've got all three Davids and Davids that matter, David Van, David D'Ambroso, and David Oldham. Got big news on the climate front. Uh, there, there's one empty chair at the G7 climate meeting, and of course we know who it was. <laughs> Donald Trump uh, didn't show up. Uh, Emmanuel Macron was there. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Abdel al-Sisi was there. Uh, Panera was there. Merkel was there. All of them were there. But Trump uh, made a pretty bold statement about the climate. Uh, he said right after a meeting with the Prime Minister, uh, India's Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, he said, Trump said, quote, he wants clean air and water. Oh, that's ooh. basically a closed deal right there. I mean, basically he's on board. I mean, you start hyperventilating. That means I'm that just he saying the man the just deal. the man said he wants clean air and clean water. He's basically <laughs> on board <laughs> with the environmental uh, things we need. He's going to shut. Yeah, I mean, don't we all want clean air and water? Well, to put all the hospitals. Have to ask the why. <laughs> put all the hospitals out of business. What are they going to do? <laughs> that's big news, though. He wants clean air and clean water. So that's huge. Wow. But you know, the thing about this climate change is if we, if we invest, and really, there's a big tragedy with the Amazon uh, fires going on. We've got this horrible. Uh, environmental tragedy going on with the fire, but this is another reason why it's foolish to invest all these trillions of dollars into a system that can be totally wrecked by one volcano uh, plume, one major tragedy like a fire, or a lightning earthquake. strike. A lightning strike, yeah. and you can wreck all of that uh, industry that we've been. Well, uh, and, a, and a lot of the Amazon comes from mis misuse and mismanagement. Of their natural resources. Right. I um, mean, they are they are clear cutting like crazy down there right. to the point that they are actually changing the climate, and mm. it has nothing to do with the carbon. It has everything to do that they want to clear cut for towns and and agriculture, and and it is literally making it less wet. Okay, let, let's use, you're from California. Sure. Many of the problems in California, they have what they always call the fire season. It's just right. part of the deal. But it made, was made worse when the environmentalists said, well, these certain kind of rats need the environment of the underbrush, and they were prohibiting people from clear-cutting the underbrush. Among other things, yeah. Near, near their homes. One thing you learn about ecology and the environment <clears throat> is that it needs your tender care. Yeah, if you're not attentive to the environment, it's just going to wreck itself. Because, I, because it's nature and nature's God are not sufficient. Not without we your intervention. We are so powerful, I had no idea the immense power we have. But take uh, Yellowstone. I was out there about 25 years ago with my family. Oh, that's a good story. Just a few years after, a massive fires. And they said, the problem is we weren't renewing the forest. We were just allowing this virgin growth to go unchecked to the point where it is, was an inevitability. It was gonna happen. And you know, once that happened, then all of a sudden you had all this new life. And I got to be there during the, you know, like the six, seven year old spruces and pines and the ponderosas and stuff. But <clears throat> then you say, well, what did it do for the habitat for the moose? Well, you know what it did? It increased the deer population because the deer had been run out because the mature trees aren't something they can chew on. Right. It's so, kind of like the pipeline, right, in Alaska. They promised that it would destroy the environment there. And it turns out that the caribou just thrived because they warmed themselves in the, yeah. in the pipeline. Yeah, you know, you see somebody dumping warm water into a pond in the middle of winter up in Minnesota. And a bunch of geese say, heck, we don't need to fly to Mexico. Let's stay right here. You know? Right. So, well, you know, there's a really good video you can YouTube. It. It's about the beginning of the, the U.S. Forest Service and, and how... The really, really big fires started right after they started the Forest Service, and we're trying to convince everybody that it was necessary for the Forest Service, mm -hmm. and and how backwards it all came about when exactly what was warned about the, from their behavior would happen happened, and they were able to capitalize on it when you think they should have been done under, you know, just yeah. done under. 
Instead, they used it to grow it to its immense okay. size and get and garner more power, and then start yeah. start well, with their, just their policies. Existence. Where was yeah. the illicit drug use at before the DEA versus yeah. after the yeah. DEA? I just I'm curious. I don't know. Can yeah. someone Google that? But with the forest, forestry, forestry. I'm telling you, these <laughs> guys are making all my constitutional yeah. points. For okay, me. okay. The National <laughs> Park Service turned uh, what 100 years old. Uh, I think this month. Thank God. Well, thank you, know, you, Teddy. Okay. Nothing, yeah, yeah. Mr. Okay. Constitutionalist himself. <laughs> now, Ronald Reagan said, the closest thing this side of heaven that we'll ever see to uh, eternal life is a government program. <laughs> and one of the things they learn when you're a bureaucrat is, if you're hired to fix a problem, don't fix it or they'll fire you. That's true. Right. You'll lose your job. Well, I think it's reminiscent of the EPA. Isn't it the biggest environmental disaster in history when the EPA dumped like yes. millions and millions and yes. millions of gallons of... Absolutely. When they yeah. turned it loose, yeah, but they, into the river without the EPA, who dumped the chemicals? But David, in the water. David, 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 they meant well. Yeah, so well, that's <laughs> the important thing. What could have happened? How how much worse could the disaster have been if someone made money off of it instead of having to spend your own money to create the disaster? Well, hey, we just that? we just had an environmental disaster on a much smaller scale right here in Tulsa. Hmm. Just over the wind, over the spring when we had flooding, oh, yeah. Yeah. which would have been resolved before it ever got started if they had started releasing water early. But they didn't. Why? We find out now it was policy, and they weren't allowed because of you know bureaucratic. I thought mess. That they had a deal with the, uh, the the dam, the power authority. They had to generate so much power. It, it's the whole thing, and it has to do with the yeah. federal government and okay. laws regulating the court. Okay, okay. Well, well, David, David, whatever. David. 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 But my point David. is, it's the bureaucracy, and it's the and it's people okay. meddling where they shouldn't be. Meddling. I gotta fess up. Okay, I'm gonna eat crow this because I remember you and I had this discussion <laughs> about it, and I was talking. Army Corps of Engineers says, "Well, if we dump too soon." And then that, you know, big massive front that we think is coming upstream comes downstream, then we add it to the problem. Okay, that makes sense by itself, but they were using that analogy to defend something completely different. And I think you and I were both with uh, Congressman Hearn when he said they finally addressed that. And there will be right. seasonal pre preemptive drops now. Right. To, to bring about a situation so we know the rainy season's coming, we're going to allow for a little bit more containment capacity, right? So yeah, how, how much of the Oklahoma so, rainforest are we going to lose as a result? <laughs> so I'm saying, David, you were right. Oh, <laughs> Baldwin was Boom. right. Okay. That's the easy thing about being named David. You can only say David was right. All right. His, get some duct tape. You know, bro, so his head's going to explode here. It's getting big. Okay. What else? The G, what, the G7, to finish this off, the G7 countries have pledged $20 million to help fight the fires, which wow, is a good 20 thing. Million. It is an interesting thing. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, he's very confident in American society to deliver in relation to climate action. And what matters here, he says, is to have a strong engagement from the American society, the American business community, and the American local authorities. But he's leaving out the federal government. It's, it's funny that he wants to blame us for their mismanagement of land. Yeah. And that is amazing. our help. Yeah, that is amazing to me. Uh, yeah, 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 we're the filthy rich. That's all you need to know. Well, we're yeah. the filthy rich. That's what it's Say it, man. Don't yeah. lie. You yeah. need to continue to subsidize Europe's military. Because <laughs> we're that rich. <laughs> yeah. Also, and, I, and I, don't, I just want to touch on this real quickly. They, they keep restating this concept that the speed of climate change. That the climate change is speeding up. It's now, happening up to four times speed, a year now. <laughs> speed. To calculate speed, you have to have an absolute frame of reference. We don't have an absolute frame of reference for the entire life cycle of the Earth. So we cannot calculate the speed of climate change. Oh, yes, we can. It's, the, it's uh, their mouth. As fast as they can uh, flap it, it is moving. All right. <laughs>